Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Alexander Khachaturian, an advisor to the Prime Minister of Armenia, a lecturer at the French University in Armenia, and the executive director of the Center for Strategic Initiatives, which is a project of Armenia's government. Alexander traveled with Prime Minister Karin Karapetyan to the World Economic Forum in, da in Davos on January 23rd. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the invitation. Last time Armenia participated in the Davos Forum was almost 10 years ago. What changed this year that Armenia attended again? We just decided that we want to be there because we have something to, th to say. We went there with, the, with a very specific agenda. We had a very, very packed schedule and we just did it. That's it. I thought, we thought that it's worth being there and talking about both our sort of private initiatives and B2B meetings, but also being a part of this discussion on the global issues. Mm -hmm. And what was the main agenda of the trip? Well, we had a very intense schedule of meetings, both with the government representatives and private sector representatives. Ultimately, the beauty of Davos is that a lot of government representatives, representatives, international organizations and companies and big thinkers are there. So you can seize that opportunity to be there and meet whoever you want in a very short and concise time. At the same time, there is a big discussion that is happening about global topics. Now, this one, this year, was about creating shared future in a fractured world. And we believe that every country, regardless of the size, about the capacity, has a say on this because all the issues that are being discussed there, they don't belong to any single country. And every country has a say on this, and this is a good platform for these types of discussions. Mm -hmm. And finally, we thought that this would be a pretty good visibility for the country because we haven't been there for a while, and we came back, and we came back in a certain, in a certain way that I think the recipients liked. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, the Prime Minister had a lot of meetings with heads of companies and corporations, official leaders, also um, <coughs> heads of dev developmental organizations. What are some specific expectations from them, from any of them? Well, as I said, I mean, with ev during every, each and every meeting, we had our specific agenda and uh, um, sort of proposal for cooperation. We had a meeting with Prime Minister of Netherlands. We've talked about agriculture, about smart agriculture and these kind of things. And we agreed that we want to cooperate with them on this topic and we want to see, explore their experience and see to what extent they can participate in reforming our agriculture here. Mm -hmm. And luckily, this, the next day we, we came back to Yerevan, they already contacted our Ministry of Agriculture and we had some follow-ups. Mm -hmm. So, But ultimately, the entire work now relies on us because we have to do a lot of follow-ups. So this was just the fundament, sort of fundament for the follow-up work that we need to do. And we're going to keep going with each and every company, with each and every country representative who had a discussion. This was the Prime Minister's first official visit to a European country um, in the last two years that he has been in the position. How does this reflect on Armenia's readiness to attract European investment? Oh, well, I don't think that there is a connection between the two. I mean, the reason Prime Minister didn't go to Europe has nothing to do with us being able to accommodate investment. And investment was coming and a lot of European companies were here. But in the context of Davos, what we were going to offer is basically a country at a platform approach where we were saying that whenever you want to access different markets, Armenia could be an interesting opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have a pretty intense reform agenda towards improving our business environment. So we have talked about that. We have talked about our figures and we have offered we have different trade regimes of different countries and different international basic platforms. And we said, OK, come and do business in Armenia. So this was just another attempt another step towards bringing more European companies to look at Armenia. Mm -hmm. And what would the follow-up to the Davos Forum look like for Armenia? Um, I think, well, when it comes to the companies, I think first thing is first, we have to make sure that they come to Armenia because what we want to do, our approach is the following. We can talk about the country as much as necessary, mm -hmm. but they have to come and see whether the reality is exactly what they were looking for, where the government can meet their, their expectations, etc. We have to be honest with each and every investor. Mm -hmm. We just have to show them what we have, and I think we have a lot of things to show. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a bit about the specific outcomes of the trip? Um, I had a separate, well, there was a meeting with, for instance, Vion. Mm -hmm. They are investors in the country, and um, besides their sort of regular business in Armenia, we've discussed, for instance, a lot of things about digitization. Another big reform agenda that the government has. And, I, and my, our approach is that definitely in this space, in the digitization space, we should put more acts on the private-public private partnerships. Mm -hmm. 
So my discussion with them was following that. Let's do. Let's talk about this agenda together because we no government is in a capacity to implement digitization mm -hmm. without partnering with companies that are operating that are operating in the country. And we will keep talking to them. I've shared our digital agenda with them. They're going to take a look, and there are some specifics that we need to talk about. I hope in the in the nearest future, we will first exchange ideas, then we'll see how they invest into that. Mm -hmm. How does this trip align with the mission and the vision of the Center for Strategic Initiatives that is a little directed on do domestic reform? Well, this like? is kind of, this was a bingo for us in a sense that we had a meeting, as I said, with country representatives and internet representatives, international financial institutions, the donors. So our discussion was pretty straightforward. We have a reform agenda. Let's work together. We need your know-how. We need your experience. We need your people to come and do this with us. So CSI's job is basically to integrate these reform processes, to help the government to craft its reform agenda. And this was a necessary piece that we had, but we want to we wanted to increase. There's always room for, for improvement. So for instance, in, in the area of agriculture, in the area of digitization, these are the area in the, in the area of development of IT sector, in the area of public administration. Each and every country, each and every meeting was targeted towards specific requests from our side. Well, thank you very much for explaining all of this, but I can't let you go without asking the last question. The Armenian media spend more energy and coverage on the airplane that you mm -hmm. all took to Switzerland than on the meetings that the Prime Minister had. Mm -hmm. Can you clarify that once and all, all, for all for all of us? I think I'm going to limit myself, limit myself to what, what was the official sort of publication from the government. But what, what I want to say, I, I was a little bit disappointed because the focus were, went in a slightly you know, different direction. Um, this, I mean, I'm going to give you the feedback that we have received from our partners when we're meeting. They were saying that Armenians are pretty open, they're very result-oriented, they're very pragmatic. So this was the message about our team from the people that we've met. I think these are the things that we should focus on. How do we make ourselves more open, more pragmatic, more business-oriented, how we can get the fruits and, I mean, okay, Flight is, is one thing, but I mean we should look we should focus on a bigger picture than the flight. And in that particular case, I think government has made a pretty straightforward announcement about that. And I don't see any any more need for, for clarification. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in.